Je suis Claire Voisin, je suis mathématicienne. Il y a une langue qui est mat, et je sais que ça va être dans le lac, une life. That is, you are extremely free, there is no hierarchy. You have to dream, you have to imagine, you have to be curious. Then I discovered algebraic geometry, which has an extremely beautiful theoretical body, a world where I can enter and I'm totally fully involved. In 2016, Claire became the first female mathematician and chair of algebraic geometry at Collège de France. Claire's PhD thesis was on Hodge theory. So really many deep uh, things to, to be done with the Hodge uh, structure. So. The Hodge decomposition theorem tells us that when we know our variety as an algebraic variety or as a complex manifold equipped with a Keller metric, we have a decomposition of this Betty homology. It's not with Z coefficient. I prove that uh, this, is, this theorem is not true anymore. For some compact Keller manifolds, starting from dimension four, I look at, at, at the, the possible Hodge structures and I show that none of them correspond to a complex projective uh, variety. She's like the incarnation of Hodge theory in France and uh, largely abroad, one of the greatest mathematicians of our time, to my, uh, to my opinion. Claire spent 30 years at the CNRS, National Centre for Scientific Research in Paris, making vital discoveries in projective algebraic varieties. In the case of, uh, of surfaces, that is uh, dimension two, Kodaira says that uh, any uh, compact Keller uh, surface is a, a deformation of a uh, projective surface. What I proved result is not true in a higher dimension. There exist uh, compact Keller manifolds in any dimension or at least uh, four, which cannot be obtained from complex projective manifold by, just by this deformation process, because there are topological obstructions to that. She's, I think, one of the best, probably the best uh, specialist of the uh, interaction between Keller geometry and Hodge theories. The green conjecture predicts if you know all the minimal degrees that you get here, you are able to compute CCGs. Claire's theorem on green was proved in two parts. First one between 2001 and 05. I proved that uh, green uh, conjecture for uh, CCGs of uh, canonical curves is true for uh, generic curves. You have all these curves which are here. Maybe you have to remove a number of such varieties, but the result will be true for all curves which lies in this big open set. In 2015, Claire proved... There are uh, unirational, but uh, non stably rational varieties with a trivial uh, unramified cohomology. I use uh, this notion of decomposition of the diagonal, which is a necessary condition for, uh, for stable rationality, and I proved that it, it behaves uh, very well. It gives many new invariants to study that problem. The conjecture is almost completely solved now, uh, thanks to her. Claire is very good at uh, having new ideas. More people can work with. She always has been a role model for us. Her main contribution is not to just work in a single discipline, but uh, to have a, a broad vision. She likes good wines. <laughs> she likes music. I mean, she's very serious, but she can be relaxed also. In 1982, Claire was writing her PhD thesis when she met Jean-Michel Caron, a math researcher, in a ballroom. Love at the first uh, sight. And <laughs> Oh, very nice. Was it for you also? Uh, yes. <laughs> because she, she is beautiful. I was very impressed by her uh, intellect. He was uh, extremely civilized, extremely polite. Did you handsome. think he was handsome? Ah, oh, yeah, yes, of course. <laughs> I, I, yes, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Very quickly, he organized a travel to, uh, to Florence in Italy. He had a culture uh, of ancient uh, art, which was uh, impressive. At that time, she, she was uh, painting, and I, I liked very much uh, her work. We got married in uh, 
Claire's parents were in their 40s when she was born in Ile-de-France, the 10th of 12 children. We, as, as, as small children, we, we were obviously totally unimportant. <laughs> I had a very dark uh, view of the existence when I met uh, Jean-Michel, and I would never have uh, imagined that uh, my life would be so extraordinary, full of uh, love, uh, full of life. Hey, look, there are of babies. Look, Marie. I discovered the childhood growing up my own children. Five kids within 10 years and now a grandchild. You know, mathematics, you never stop uh, thinking. Our parents used to share between the, the two of them. I was working in the morning and Jean-Michel was working in the afternoon. <laughs> During Sunday, we gathered uh, at uh, five to see the movie, and then we had a, a dinner together. Uh, and we, we read uh, in uh, our parents' room uh, all together. We, we found a great uh, pleasure uh, doing things together. And I made this, this one. This <laughs> one. <laughs> Until I was uh, 40, I, uh, I was most of the time at home, apart from uh, conferences. It's uh, the recognition, the, the academic world, which pushes traveling, living home. I don't know anything about uh, our work. Are you proud of what your mother has achieved? Uh, yes, very, very much. She always wants us to be active, and uh, she's also um, quite um, demanding. demanding. When we were young, there was um, an activity where we each one of us uh, invented a, a story, and we must put something weird in the story. With fun, but also with uh, uh, effort and uh, uh, the sense of doing something that is useful. If she sees that uh, we are happy, so she's happy for us. Our mother always tried to encourage creativity. Mm -hmm. I guess that's why uh, one of the reasons why I, I want to, to work in the film industry. I am an applied mathematician. I'm working in uh, control theory. Recently, both Claire and Jean-Michel were invited to work at the Institute for Theoretical Research at ETH in Zurich. I have essentially three books, 80 research papers. The questions that I like the, the most are those where I have absolutely no idea at the beginning how to do questions where we, we have no tools. But uh, how the ideas come, it's really, it's always a mystery. When Janusz Kalar flies into Hong Kong for the Shah Prize ceremony, he'll likely look up at the roof of the passenger terminal. He told us, among the images of buildings and structures he's seen in Hong Kong, he finds the roof here the most interesting. When he looks at the roof, he sees patterns of elliptical lines. I worked on, on exactly understanding the type of surfaces where made up of two, three, or more grids of ellipses. To me, it's very nice to see that, that these are actually used and they are constructed. At the airport, he doesn't think this roof design is simply decorative. Uh, I believe it is structural. Janusz has been in the math department at Princeton University for 18 years. Before that, he spent a dozen years at the University of Utah. He's always been fascinated by shapes and the relationship between algebra and geometry. We try to understand geometry using algebra and try to understand algebra using geometry. I'm especially interested in the cases where the shape is very sensitive to small changes of the numbers. Like the lemniscate of Bernoulli. x to the 4 plus 2x square y square plus y to the 4 equals x square minus y square. So it looks like a nice figure eight. It goes around and it comes back here and back, okay? Now, a small change in the equation. 
What happens if I add it to it a plus 0.1? Turns out I get some thing that hugs the figure 8 from the inside. So I get something like this, and I also get the same thing at the other side. This is very close to the figure 8, but instead of making or being made out of just one piece of metal, it's suddenly made out of two pieces. And the blue lines don't intersect. What happens if I subtract 0.1 from it? Well, then I again get something that will hug the figure 8, but this time it will hug it from the outside. So that means you get something that looks like this. So again, you say it's a figure eight. This it doesn't have this part where it intersects. You can think of it as a circle where the, you're trying to bring the top and the bottom together. Janusz is known by other mathematicians as an original thinker. This idea of what he calls rationally connected varieties, which he wrote a whole book about. That was really a brand new insight. The overall subject of when varieties are rational or unirational goes back at this point 150 years. But this was a really new approach to it. There was his work with Mori early on on minimal models, classification of three-dimensional varieties. And he disproved a very long-standing conjecture of John Nash, who both won a Nobel Prize in economics and a Arbor Prize. It really built on the earlier work that he had done with Mori. He used everything they had developed in, in three dimensions to then plug in and disprove this long-standing open conjecture. As a grad student, Stanford's Ravi Vakil attended a Janos lecture. His ideas were really simple. He didn't complicate things, he simplified things, but he was talking about such subtle things that, that you had to pay attention to every word and, and, and the 10 or 15 words that were behind every word. Even before I started graduate school, he was the greatest algebraic geometer of the field, and he still is. He's, on one hand, seen as kind of an unstoppable machine, technically. He's mentally stronger than others, and then there's a, a hill to go around, he will just go right through it, but he also has finesse as well. As a graduate student at Brandeis University, Janos met his future wife, Jennifer, who is also now a mathematician at Princeton. If I'm in the same room when he's working, then I, I can't think about anything else because it, it looks like something is going to explode over there. And this can go on for quite a while. It's like an illness that occasionally you have these attacks. I'm attacked by mathematics and then for three weeks, weeks I'm ill. <laughs> I mean, it's not a good analogy because, because I enjoyed it, yeah, so, and, 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 and I think it's very useful at the end. Janos is the only member of his family in North America. He left his native Hungary after university when the country was still under communist rule. He did not imagine returning. It's clear they would have at least taken away my passport, you know, I would have had a very hard time getting a job. He was the eldest of six children. He was day and night on the mathematics. We told him that there is a breakfast, or we told him there is dinner. He came out, he did not speak one single word, ate something quickly and went back. Today is much better. Janos is surrounded by engineers. That includes his brother Peter, his parents, and now his daughter Alicia, an electrical engineer. I still don't understand what he does, but you know, a lot of the so I think what he would consider sort of basic early grad school math actually sort of turns up a lot in my work. And so then we start discussing. He is known to be a very tough teacher, not only to graduate students, but also to undergraduate students. I'm surprised to learn now he is among our best undergraduate teacher. Student in his calculus class nominated him for Outstanding Teaching Award. He still keeps his very tough, high standard. People really value his opinion, so, you know, you want him to have a good opinion of you, and that's where people are intimidated. Well, but I especially like when I teach a class of non-mathematicians, and then at the end of the year, one or two students, they usually come to me that, 
Well, I would like to be a mathematician.